Hello everyone, welcome to the Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto studios uh, with two great guests, Tara Slotowski, who's the founder and CEO of Iridescent and, and our Simpson Global and that ambassador of Technovation. Guys, thanks for coming in today. Appreciate uh, moving your schedules around to come in. Um, thanks for coming into our studio. You bet. Yeah. So Sindar Pakai was at your event. Uh, that's the big story this past week. It's been the Google memo from a low-level employee um, who wrote some things that got the whole world shaking around. Uh, gender biases, role of women in tech, and as we do a lot of women in tech, as you know, with theCUBE, uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, women in over the years, friends, and also smart people. Um, this is a pretty big moment for you guys. You had an event at Google. Sundar canceled his all-hands meeting to address this under fear of re retaliation and, and safety, but came to your event on the Google campus. Um, surprising to many, it was written up on Recode uh, and The Verge. Um, pretty notable. So tell us about what happened. Go ahead. Um, so, so yeah, this was the 2017 Technovation World Pitch uh, competition and the award ceremony. And uh, Sundar came and he talked to a lot of the girls who were presenting their ideas to solve problems in their community. And then um, he had a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one conversation to learn a little bit more about the kinds of problems, their interest in technology entrepreneurship. And then uh, he addressed the crowd of 900 plus supporters and really re-emphasized that uh, there's a place for women in technology and more importantly for him and uh, Google that there's a place for these girls at Google. Great timing for you guys too. Um, and I want to drill more into, into what happened, but I want to just uh, point out this was a scheduled uh, stop for Sundar in terms of it. You guys have a program called Technovation, which was a 2017 world pitch. Folks from around you, the global ambassador. Mm -hmm. Take a minute to uh, talk about what Technovation is. Uh, why was it on Google's campuses? What was it all about? What does global ambassador mean? Talk about your mission. Right, um, so Technovation's mission is to empower girls to become technology entrepreneurs, and it's much more than just learning how to code. It's really about seeing girls um, and telling girls that if there's a problem in their community, technology can help them have a very powerful voice. We've been running for eight years, and Anar is our global ambassador who has helped us grow to more than 100 countries. But um, it, Technovation's um, relationship with Google is eight years long. Uh, Google has supported Technovation, was the very first technology company to support Technovation way before any other company saw the potential. And since then, since 2010, Google has provided funding, mentors, spaces, not just across the U.S., but globally. And so this year, it was a year-long worth of relationship where Made With Code, which is their arm focusing on, on gender equality, um, they basically provided funding, but uh, made this event possible at Google headquarters. And now, talk about the global ambassador role you have, and, and kind of comes back to the question for Tara as well. Uh, after is, is it beyond entrepreneurship and beyond coding? I mean, talk about specifically what you guys are bringing to uh, folks outside of Silicon Valley. Oh, sure. So, um, you know, my role as the global ambassador for Technovation um, is really. Go, getting to girls all over the world and saying to them, um, you need to be engaged in technology. And what we found, as Tara mentioned, uh, we've been doing this now, I've been doing this now for five years, is that we're building uh, a movement. We're bringing in girls, uh, we're bringing in mentors, we're bringing in companies and governments together uh, to make this a reality for, um, for girls in tech careers in their own countries. And um, I want to go back and, and address um, Google's relationship with Technovation a little bit more because this is more of an anecdote. Um, I got into Technovation um, n not willingly. <laughs> um, six years ago, I had a startup. It was called Parallel Earth, and I was working, ha working hard at it. And I was using the offices at Mozilla because they allow people to do that, you know, people like me to work there. And one day, um, somebody sent me a note. It just came on the internal email system, and they said, you know, you're a woman, you're in tech. Um, there's an event going on at Andreessen Horowitz um, where the luminaries of the valley are going to be talking, and so the luminaries were uh, Marisa Mayer, who was at Google at that time, uh, Frida Kapoor-Klein, um, uh, Padmashri Warrior, 
and um, I forget there was two two other people. And so we we went to this event and we sat in a packed room at Andreessen Horowitz. And these women, the luminaries of the valley at that time, uh, each one of them stood up and told us their story. And afterwards, they fed us, you know, um, hors d'oeuvres and 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 offered us wine. And then they said, before you go, <laughs> we have one ask of you, uh, which is, could you sign up to be a mentor for Technovation? And I thought to myself, no, I am like over my head in my own <laughs> company. I don't even have time for myself and I, to mentor. And you know, the ask was, uh, be a mentor. It's just two days, uh, par pardon me, two hours a week for 12 weeks. And I thought to myself, oh God, man, I drank their wine. I ate their order, <laughs> so I listened to them, and now how can I say no? And so I signed up. And it was a stretch for me because what happened at that time, the curriculum was still being delivered by a person. And so they, I'd been assigned to, a, uh, to the Google campus in Mountain View, and that somebody, an engineer at Google, had been able to get a room, a very small conference room. And so for 12 weeks, I met this team of girls from Mountain View, and there were other mentors like me, you know, and then uh, there was a, a whole bunch of girls from Sequoia High School. And John, in that 12 weeks, um, I was a changed woman. Those five girls, they blossomed under me. Um, you know, when I met them, I said to them, yeah, I'm here, I uh, am a type A, and this is a company. I signed up for the uh, injuries and Horowitz. Exactly. Kool-Aid <laughs> injection. Uh, exactly. And, and listen, I'm a type A, and I've got my own star, but we're going to win. This is a competition. <laughs> so they, they just roll their eyes at me like, oh, who the heck she is, and uh, we don't we even want to be here. Short straw on this one. Exactly. Yeah. But, but those 12 weeks changed my life. And then uh, we in won. In what way? What way did it change? Well, it's just, you know, I have a degree in computer science. I have a master's in communications. I, I've been, I went to Stanford for innovation and entrepreneurship. So I've been in the field for a very long time. And what I saw in terms of the curriculum, what I saw in terms of the mentorship, what I learned about, you know, design thinking and, and, and being able to create an app, I never had that, right? When people like me were going through university and doing computer, we never had that kind of stuff. And I thought... Oh my God, if I'd had that, I would be like soaring the skies right now. And um, to have girls who, uh, who um, really came to this table with nothing and you see them becoming graphic designers because they had a little bit of access to Microsoft Paint, you know, someone who has the ability to do PowerPoint. One girl in my team of five, almost never showed up. You know, she was late, she never came, and then uh, two weeks, or, or pardon me, two sessions before the, the pitch, she showed up and she realized, well, you know, we're, we're, have, we've gone so far without her. So here's what she did. Um, she took that little graphic that the woman who'd done it in paint, and uh, she got her mom, and they went to some t-shirt shop, and they got that graphic printed, and the next time she came, there were five t-shirts that said the name of our team, which was Intoxication Station, and one for me, and then, it turns out she's a really good speaker. Who knew? So she almost never came, brought these shirts, was the speaker for the group, and we won like the, 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 the um, local competition, and then the next one, and then we placed second in the final. So she came in, contributed with the T-shirt, oh. ingratiated back in, won the trust of the group, yes. ended up being the speaker and winning the award. Yes, they the grew. They, they literally, you know, if you take a time lapse and you see a flower blossom, that's exactly what happened. Tara, talk about your credentials, because you have a PhD, I think, um, right? So I have a yeah, a bachelor's in physics and master's in aerospace, and I was in a PhD program in aerospace, but I dropped out because I wanted to start iridescent. So. Oh, that's good. Dropping out of PhD has a good track record in Silicon Valley. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of folks who dropped out of Stanford, uh, including some of the big names we now know. What are, what's some examples of in, during your life where you had those kind of change moments? I think um, iridescent. We are now in our twelfth year, and um, every every couple of months, it's a change moment because it's a test of grit and just believing in yourself. Because I mean, I started it with just an idea and grew it to be an organization that's all over the world, and it doesn't come with just just full-hearted focus and a lot of courage is what I've seen. I think um, I've also seen that how much you are passionate about an idea really swings how the other person is thinking. And so the idea only matters so much. I think it's, of course, I mean, the track record and everything has to be there. But I think a lot of it depends on your own passion for it. And I think I've come to realize that passion is maybe 
proportional to the complexity and the and the impact of the problem you're trying to solve. So if you're only trying to um, solve a small problem, you lose interest in two years, right? And maybe that's why I'm always curious, like why do so many startups fail after two or three years? It's because maybe you came in not thinking that you're going to change the world. Maybe you came in because you wanted to make quick money or exit or whatever. And so I think for me, it's this is my life's work. And we want to bring, bring more underrepresented communities into innovation. And so this is not something that's going to be solved easily. Yeah. Startup success and then you know people working on teams really is about inclusion and letting things bloom and being ready for anything. That's mm -hmm. the greatest key. Let's get back to the Sundar event that you guys were having. I think this is a good conversation to have because one of the things that came out of the brouhaha that became that memo really was a, a conversation publicly. Now, it's been polarizing. There's been some kind of a hate, hate kind of mindset with it most of the time. Plenty of stuff on the internet to go read there, but there was actually some good conversations in the industry. What was the conversation like during the event? Because this was in full, full conversation mode while you guys were having your 2017 World Pitch Competition of which he presided mm -hmm. over and had a speech to the to the uh, entrepreneurs. What was it like? What was some of the conversations that were taking place? I think um, the most powerful piece of the whole evening was really the girls walking in and seeing the incredible diversity that we have in this world, right? So we had girls from and and mentors and supporters from over thirty countries and just the them coming and waving the flags and different faces and different cultures all trying to make the world a better place. I mean, it's rare that you see that using technology, and I think it's very fitting that Silicon Valley is the center of this, but um, I think I think there was not one dry eye in the, in, the, in the group because you realize it's the conversation is so much bigger than one company, one country. It is something that affects us as all human beings, and you're believing in human potential. So I think seeing these young girls, some of them 10 years old, mm -hmm. there was this, I think, Maybe the crowd's favorite was um, these 10-year-old girls from Cambodia yes. who want to uh, <laughs> improve sort of the lives of these people working in cottage industries, right? And they, w they created an app like, say, Etsy or something, but focused on Cambodian products and the courage of these little girls. I think everybody walks away feeling, okay, there's hope. There's it, even in the midst of all of this yeah. discussion. Yeah, it creates a, a lightning rod in some ways, and hopefully we'll, we'll move on to the, the substantive conversations. How do you guys feel about what happened? And as you take this mission forward, yeah. um, you guys are doing some amazing work, and we'll do a whole other segment, I think, that's on that in a minute. But given the landscape now, how do you view this? And how, do you, how are you talking with friends and colleagues and family members around it? Because I've certainly had certainly conversations with, with uh, my friends, certainly on the East Coast, like, no, no, that's not the way Silicon Valley is. <laughs> Google actually is a very cool company. It's not exactly like what you think it is. They're very open. Uh, they support a lot of great initiatives. And they're candid. And, and, and then I go on to explain. It's like a university. Sergey and Larry have this little, little uh, ecosystem that they've kind of built a university culture, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but it is open, and there's things that happen that get misrepresented. Uh, that was my, my take uh, for the folks that don't know Silicon Valley. But what's your take? What do you think about what's happened? Um, so this is really, really good that you brought up the university campus um, uh, you know, uh, environment of it. So I have two girls. They're both millennials, and they're both in the tech world. Um, and we had this discussion. And here, here's the perfect answer, right? Uh, so one of my daughters, um, Kat, she said that you know, when she read that, she thought it was basically a gathering of his thoughts and it was a gathering of his thoughts because he was probably uh, asked to adhere to uh, IND uh, stuff that's going on in every company right now, right? And so it was like a little bit of a, wait a second, you know, he, he's, he wants to sort of um, respond to his being asked to go to IND stuff. And then Katya said, but you know, mom, it was just a gathering of his thoughts. And if this, this is an essay, and it was a poorly written one. And if I was grading it, I would give him a C minus. Then my older daughter said, "Oh, he'll give him an F on that one." Right? Across the board, but C minus. She's generous. See, like no, because he, he did. He tried to make yeah. it very yeah. professional and very academic. And she said, "But it was uh, a first draft. He has not. You know, he didn't proceed to uh, toughen it up, solid, solidify it, find more evidence. Um, you know, have it critiqued. It was just a gathering of his thoughts, and he hasn't gone through the process." And, both these girls graduated from Berkeley, and so I think they would know what a C paper looks like versus an A paper. And then my older daughter said, and the other thing is, um, you know, it's not, it's not like um, IND efforts are actually bad. 
but but what we're trying to do is we're trying to condense the time in which we're trying to get women uh, at the at equal pairing in the tech world now you know women have never been at equal pairing in many professions there were not enough doctors lawyers accountants um, you name it right main street wall street has never had equality and now we're looking at technology and the reason everything just flares up in technology is because we live in today's world where news and information is available all the time um, so there's two things going on uh, information is readily avail available. People can come into the conversation very quickly, and whenever anything happens in Silicon Valley, the effect is massive because all eyes are are on Silicon Valley all the time. So it's it's a bit of a distorted view, but we have gone through this. It took a long time for women to become uh, astronauts. It took a long time for women to become neurosurgeons. It took a long time for women to become lawyers and dentists. It will take a little bit of time for women to become top technologists, but we're hoping that it'll shorten and things happen quickly in the valley and we're trying to get that quicker and so we're seeing a little bit of friction. This is responses from millennials. So for me, it was like, Interesting yes. perspective. Yes, great perspective. And Ben Sooner said these things, um, you know, at, at the world pitch. I was sitting in the second row and every time he said something, I would clap for it really loud and Todd said, why are you being so good? And I said, I need to hear that. I need to hear him say that because- What did he say that moved you? Oh, he just said, you know, you have a place in technology. And I said, yes, we needed to hear you say that right away, yeah. all the time. And especially to these girls, these eight to 18 year old girls, and all of the ones that come from 100 countries that weren't at, at Google, but yeah. were listening to the live pitch. Um, and I needed to hear it. I'm a veteran, but I needed to hear it. It's because, interesting too, the narrative you know, that the millennials and certainly the younger kids here is a, uh, an echo of what comes down. And interesting, my son, who was 15 at dinner last night said, Dad, I'm a white male. What is that? No, mean? <laughs> poor guy. And I'm like, oh my oh. God, he's a young kid. So again, yeah. things are shifting. They're out of context. Yeah. Tara, your thoughts on on how uh, this all evolves and the, the positive things that folks can do and your, what's your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think I had a long discussion with my husband yesterday on this because he's a white male, right? And um, and But also, he ke we have two daughters, right? And so there's this whole he for she campaign, right? And that... I think like our conversation earlier, the discussion has to be very inclusive and you cannot polarize. And I think I have to be careful because, I mean, uh, my passion is what drives the work because uh, the work is hard. But I have to also remind that, okay, there's a whole another um, segment of the population that cares, right? And so I think it's just, uh, it's just constantly remembering these kinds of things. I think um, uh, in terms of what the industry can do, I, I think the, the normal things that people are doing, which is really well, investing in lower in the pipeline, uh, investing in young girls and all of that kind of stuff, and, and also sort of the inclusion and diversity stuff in the workforce. But I think there are some other segments, other industries that we can learn from, and I think one very unique uh, place is actually the aviation industry, but the experimental aircraft, uh, is, so which is just aviation enthusiasts, right? And so they have this uh, gathering, yearly annual gathering, and 600,000 people come from all over the world. The thing that makes it unique, and, um, and there's almost equal representation, the two things that make it very unique. First, it's a family affair. And I think uh, the tech industry has done a very good job sort of uh, convening these developer conferences, but they are closed, and most of them are 100% male, right? Um, I think there could be something there where the, it's, a, it's, again, much more than a company. It's, it's um, that the industry has to do, and to make it maybe non, uh, not commercial, but do it as a fun family gathering um, and not in Silicon Valley. And then I think the second would be to actually lean on the veterans of the industry to share their passion with the young ones. And I think one of the problems with technology is that it's moved so fast that it's become very abstract. And nothing is very hands-on. If you open up something, you will not understand anything. And so what the aviation industry has done really well is to showcase the core fundamental principles of how these things work using the old airplanes, old engines, combustion engines. But you can see how things work. Yeah. Right, and so it's like fundamentals, like kindergarten, it's like exactly, Lego blocks. exactly. Start that way, and then you can go into the more com complex. But I think there's a role for the veterans of the tech world right. to play here. Um, and I think it's not just sort of gender, but it's also maybe age and and um, making it much more about the family rather than just the mm -hmm. the developer in the family. Tara and, and Nar, you guys are inspiration. Thanks for taking the time and 
you know, I've had, uh, you know, my age luxury of spending nine years at Hewlett Packard Company before it was split back in the late 80s, early 90s when Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard were around. And one of the things that really influenced me, and I think this is something that I see a positive light coming in this industry, to your point about some, some changes, is that we seem to be going back to a, a, a crowd that wants to see respect for the individual and citizenship. These were company values at Hewlett Packard when I was there that I always remembered was unique. They go, hey, you can have differences, but if you have respect for the individual and you have a citizenship mindset, that seems to have been lost in tech. And, and mm -hmm. with the whole this whole movement you see, and you know, win at all costs, you know, being an asshole, what what, what you got to do to be a CEO, mm -hmm. or you know, flip it fast, or you know, bros mm -hmm. program, you know, so it became a very selfish environment. It seems to be shifting now with this conversation. Your thoughts? So I, I have to say, um, you know, doing a startup is not easy. Um, getting successful in this world is not easy. Um, shaking um, the status quo is not easy. So I have to say that um, the same people, and you know, we're not going to name names, but the same people who are, um, y y you know, very arrogant and and have little uh, respect for the laws and rules. They have given us products that are changing people's lives. There is no question yeah. about it. Um, without their bravado, without their um, um, sort of, um, you know, I don't care, I'm just going to go over you if you don't yeah. uh, comply with me. Uh, you know, a lot of um, ride sharing wouldn't even have happened. Yeah. And uh, to me, when you provide employment, when you provide alternative services, when you provide something that um, takes away the way things were, I see that as a plus, okay? I think what we're seeing is that's needed to a certain extent, and then you realize, okay, now we have to get back to growing it yeah. and working it, and if you keep going in that mode, you probably won't succeed. So being tough and determined and having grit yes. is what you need to break through those walls as a startup, but you don't need to be necessarily a jerk. But your point is, if you're creating value. If you're creating value, and, th and that sometimes you actually have to be a jerk, because there are very few brave, non-jerk people who have gone against yeah. uh, big unions and big monopolies, right? You and I, like, I would not be able to go against the taxi commission. You need somebody who is a complete a-hole to do that. Yeah. And he did that, and it made a difference. Yeah. He doesn't have to continue to do that, and that's, that's There was a meme point. going around the internet, if you want to make friends, sell ice cream. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. so you can't always win friends when you're pioneering right. uh, things. Right, right. And, and you know, th there is a balance, and maybe maybe we've, um, we've fostered the fact that you need to be um, that attitude for everything, and that's not true. So, you know, the pendulum shifted a bit too much. But I think you shouldn't, that we shouldn't scorn them, <laughs> because really they have made a difference. Let's just let it's everybody a, it's, get it's back a, it's to... It's a tough world out there to survive, and you have to have that, that kind of elbow, so. el sharp elbows to make things happen. I think so. And, but it's the value you're providing and how you do it. Exactly. I mean, question too. Yeah, also, yeah. Um, well, thanks so much, guys, for coming on. I appreciate you spending the time to talk about uh, your awesome event, the 2017 World Pitch as part of Technovation, where Sundar uh, represented uh, Google and your great program with young girl coders and, and tech folks. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. This Welcome. is Cube Conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.